NASA revealed new details on Wednesday about a groundbreaking mission that will send a spacecraft into the sun's atmosphere. The mission will take NASA's spacecraft closer to our star than any spacecraft has gone before, and it is set to launch in the summer of 2018. Mike Massimino is senior advisor for space programs at the Intrepid Museum and a former NASA astronaut, and we're so pleased to have you here. Um, My pleasure, Link. Thanks for having me. Let me pick your astronaut brain here. <laughs> People talk Pick about t touching the sun. What yeah. are we really talking about? Here? Uh, it, uh, it, well, this, you know, touching the sun sounds like it's going to be really hot, and <laughs> it will be really hot. Uh, we haven't been able to. This is the first time they're sending a spacecraft to the sun, and it's not because they didn't want to before. It's just that we haven't been able to get one there. The materials needed to withstand that that temperature that it's going to get on its way there, and getting close to it and around the corona. Uh, it, it not not uh, the regular spacecraft couldn't couldn't take it. So uh, this is the closest we'll ever be to the sun. It's the first one we're going to the sun with the spacecraft, and it's because now we have the materials and technology to do it, which is pretty exciting because this is something they've wanted to do for for decades. You mentioned the corona. What is the corona? The corona is a like the you can think of it as like the atmosphere of the of the sun. So like we have an atmosphere around us, so it's the surrounding area. I think I would think of it that way, surrounding area around the sun, and so you have the you know the sun itself. The, the, the star, huge star, especially compared to the to the Earth and other planets, and then uh, and then the corona surrounds it. And and you know, what we so when we see the sun, we're kind of looking at the sun and its corona. Hmm. All right. So you talk about the significance of this mission. I mean, the Parker Solar Probe is going to go seven times closer to the sun than any spacecraft has. Talk to me about some of the technology that's required to allow a spacecraft to get that close, because you're talking about extreme environments. It's really Really, really hot. I mean, you know, the surface of the sun is about 6,000 degrees, and the corona around it is much hotter than that. It actually gets hotter as you get away from the from the sun. So to be able to get anywhere near that is, is requires a spaceship that can really take the heat, and this one can can take the heat. So it's primarily the materials, but but it's also the communications. The instruments have to be able to live in that environment. You have to protect those instruments. It's also going to be not just the, the heat, but also the radiation that the sun gives off. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's one of the reasons they're doing this mission is to understand the radiation that the sun gives off a little bit better to help protect us better here on Earth. Because that radiation does affect us. It certainly affects us when, as an astronaut flying above the atmosphere, took a, a much greater dose of radiation uh, than you, than, you know, even as you go to a higher mountain, you get higher, further you get away from the planet, thinner the atmosphere. On a higher mountain, you get more radiation than on at sea level. When you get above the atmosphere, you're exposed even more. And further away you get uh, from from the atmosphere, the less you're protected. Uh, you get on the way to the moon or Mars or somewhere else like that, you're going to take a much bigger dose of radiation. So. As, that, as this spacecraft approaches it, it's going to get a pretty hefty dose of radiation, which means it's got to stay in communication to be able to send its data and images and whatever else it's collecting back to Earth, and, and beside just the extreme temperatures. Because things like solar wind, solar storms that happen, I mean, that affects us. Does that affect everything in the, in the it, solar system? It does. And, and I think, the, you know, for, from, from, my, you know, from my interest in trying to hopefully get people uh, away from our planet. You know, and, and exp the number one uh, issue we have is, is or I would, you can debate number one, but it's definitely at the top. And I would say actually it is maybe the biggest health risk and the biggest challenge for people is radiation. Um, you know, we have to figure out ways of life support, water, food, and so on. But you need to be able to protect people from, from radiation. And uh, by doing this mission, uh, hopefully we're going to learn some more about the radiation that the sun gives off. Also being able to predict uh, solar flares, solar activity. We call it space, space weather is, is what it's called. But we want to be able to understand that a little bit better. We try to predict as best we can solar activity, because solar activity means it's going to be a greater dose of radiation coming this way. We're pretty well protected here on Earth. We're very lucky. Sometimes we don't realize, I think, how lucky we are to live here. Uh, we have a, a Van, a Van Allen radiation belts that protect us from a lot of radiation. But once you get outside of that, you're exposed. The atmosphere protects us as well. And when we get outside of, this, outside of this cocoon that we have to protect us, 
we're, we're running a risk of, of getting too much radiation exposure. And if we can predict the solar activity, which we can, but not as accurately, as accurately as the scientists would like to do that, we have a better chance of keeping people protected and also our spacecraft protected. And it also affects us here on Earth because our electronic equipment and our communications can be affected by the solar activity and this radiation as well. So uh, this is really, I think, going to be a very interesting mission, has the potential to open up answers to a lot of questions that uh, we've had for a long time. What do we know about the proposed timeline of this mission? I think they're saying uh, pretty soon, isn't it? I'm looking at the, the brief is, here. 20, 2018. 2018, but it's going to take a while to yeah, get there. Because I think they're going to go. They're going to do flybys around uh, Venus, around Venus mm -hmm. to get a little bit closer. But I tell you what, years pass very quickly in these. Before you know it, we're going to be having a conversation that it's there. You know, these spacecraft. It takes a long time for them to get there. They're very. Uh, clever about the way they do it, using the gravity of other planets, in this case it's going to be Venus, to get it uh, get it closer to the moon, uh, get it closer to the sun rather, I'm sorry, not the moon, but the sun. Uh, so they're clever in the way they design these missions and it, it takes a long time, but um, I, I think before you know it we'll be, we'll be getting uh, data back and just like you know the Juno spacecraft out at Jupiter, it took it a while to get there and once it gets there it gets very exciting. So mark your calendars, I'm not sure exactly when it's going to arrive there, but I'm sure we'll be getting some exciting news in a few years. After it we got to get a launch first. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. 2018, in the summer of 2018, yeah. is what they're looking at for the launch. But it's interesting because NASA has renamed this mission on Wednesday the Parker Solar Probe after mm -hmm. the astrophysicist Eugene Parker. What can you tell us about him and how his research relates to this mission? Well, I, I, you know, that's quite an honor for him, for his family. He's actually still alive. Mm -hmm. Usually you have to die before they name something after you, so it's not always a good sign. But, but this guy is so well revered uh, and he, he's still alive, they wanted to name the the, uh, the probe after him, so I think it's a great honor for him, uh, and for all people in this in this uh, in this field of, of studying the sun and and, and space weather. Uh, but he uh, was one of the first uh, astronomers to. Um, hypothesize how the sun worked. Uh, things like solar wind, he hypothesized that that was, that was possible, this, this movement of particles away from the sun that was actually a, like, like a wind, like a force that you might be able to use or at least try to understand what it does. Uh, and then he was proven correct. So that's kind of kind of interesting when a, an astronomer or scientist comes up with a theory and without it, having all the evidence and then doing the investigation and proving this this great uh, this great find this, this this great piece of information and so for those reasons and other reasons uh, of his discoveries of his research they they named the spacecraft after him so I think it's a it's a great honor for him and for everyone in the, in this field well once again it's just mind blowing to think about the possibilities out there Mike Massimino thank you so much for. Stopping. My Thanks for having me. Appreciate it.